Greetings all. This is a project I did a number of years ago and it kind of represents one of my older uh, videography techniques and uh, it's about painting the top side of your boat. And so let's get started with this. Of course, doing a top side job uh, in paint, you're going to need uh, primer, you're going to need paint, you're going to need lots of sandpaper, you're going to need uh, repair material like fairing compound, and if you have to do some major fiberglass work, you're going to need some epoxy. Um, so, and then you're going to need brushes and rollers. So let's get started on this project here. You know, I'm not going to recommend uh, anything real specific on this, but uh, I'll show you the technique I did. And I did it a little bit different than, oh, kind of a lot of your, your average people might do. And uh, you might get some insights and tricks and, and such associated with this. So when I first got the boat, uh, the paint didn't look too bad from the six foot rule, but uh, if sitting on the boat and such, you could definitely tell it was starting to chip a little bit and looked a little faded. And I tried polishing it and it just wouldn't do anything. Also, there was some crazing of the gel coat a little bit underneath the paint that was starting to show through. So one of the first projects I decided to do was do the top side of the paint. And... Uh, so I uh, decided to, to bite the bullet and start to do that. And again, kind of the products that I used is I used an epoxy primer, then I used a regular single stage primer, and then I used an enamel topside paint. But of course, with any good paint job, it's all about the prep. So you could see I had some faded paint here, I had some crazing, and decided to start sanding that down. And that was a good opportunity to do any repairs that were needed, like uh, fairing of chips and, and dings and such. Also, I needed a little bit of fiberglass repair, so I busted out the, the epoxy for that and decided to do, do uh, some of those repairs. So it's all about trying to get it flat and smooth uh, so it accept the, the primer real good. Even though I do have to rave about the epoxy primer, it binds really, really well to a lot of different medias and such. So this probably took the most amount of time, uh, was doing all the prep work and such. The other thing that I found fairly time consuming in the whole project was taping things off. So when I eventually did get to the, to the painting project, uh, taping was really kind of one of the big things that, that I ended up doing. So I got, got everything all pretty good and I started to use my epoxy primer and I used a gray color. And the reason why I used gray was for contrast. Um, I wanted to make sure that I was able to get it level and also that I wasn't going to sand through the primer. So that was kind of my reasoning of doing this as kind of a color scratch coat. And I'm kind of glad I did. Now, even though I was going to paint the top side white, I eventually used, covered it with a white single stage primer. So overall I did about three total coats, two of epoxy primer and maybe one and a half or two of uh, uh, the white single stage paint. So here you can start to see I'm using the, the gray epoxy primer. I kind of hit some of the real rough spots first and did an initial coat on that and then I sanded it down and then I applied another coat and again I'm trying to get this really smooth and I would repeat this process and overall I would say I used about a gallon of the epoxy primer on my top side and uh, you know I'd say I did maybe two and a half coats on that uh, with my white primer which you'll see eventually I probably used only about a half a gallon on that. I mean, this is premium paint, so it actually covers real well. And maybe I overdid it a little bit. Um, but between coats, I would sand and then um, wash. I'd wa you know, sand the boat, and then I'd wash it, and then I'd wipe it down with acetone. And I'd do you know, some of my retaping and such. So that's what I found as being very time consuming in this whole project. But because it was in such poor condition, I really felt it was worth the effort uh, to do it this way um, so that in the future if the paint started to fade I could just kind of kind of go down to the to the primer and uh, you know put in just another enamel topside coat on it so I was looking at the future a little bit on this boat 
so again you kind of see some of the buildup that i've done uh again filling in some of the the crazing that had taken place with the gel coat and it's been about three years since i've painted this and i haven't seen anything of the the crazing come through the adhesion has been really good uh i'm really happy with this the way this project turned out um, again, if I kind of had an opportunity to start fresh, I mean, it would have been nice to do gel coat over this, but since it was already painted, I really was stuck with using paint. So yeah, the epoxy primer worked out really, really good. And I don't know if I'd, uh, you know, the single stage paint is pretty easy. Epoxy primer does take a little bit of getting used to. And having getting, gotten used to it, I found it actually worked out pre pretty good, uh, much better than I thought. I mean, it dried fairly quickly. It was very, very workable. So I was able to get it, get the, the gray epoxy primer coats very, very smooth, and thus I was very satisfied. With that, then came the white single stage primer. And again, that's because I was painting the boat white, kind of an off-white color, and uh, you know, you didn't want the, the gray tint underneath it. So again, the gray paint was just a contrast coat, kind of a scratch coat. And that's why I did the gray coat. And you might want to consider that. I mean, it's pretty glary out on boats and such, especially in the sunshine. So then it was time just to uh, put the white primer on, and that went very, very smoothly. Uh, again, I had sanded down the gray epoxy primer down to about 120 to 220 grit. Then I applied the, the white primer over it, and then I knocked that down with 100 uh, 20 and some cases I did 220 to get it get a little bit smoother but it provided a nice uh, scratch coat for me to actually then uh, apply the final enamel top coat and with the enamel top coat I did eventually I did do three coats of it uh, mainly that's because of my particularity of kind of putting on paint relatively thin and again i always like good coverage with it and such and i didn't want to have any uh of the primer showing so i did three coats and i actually had a buddy help me with that so the top coats went really quick now overall with my painting i did do kind of the roll and tip technique though it was very hard to get a lot of the roller action so for the most part i would say I kind of brush this on once i got the final coat on um, the enamel top side paint. I had a little bit of orange peel and it was thick enough where I was able to uh, sand it down, uh, wet sand it, you know, 600 all the way up to 2000 grit and then cut and polish it. And overall, super satisfied the way it came out. I found out that my boat maintenance was a lot easier that the boat didn't get quite as dirty of course it took to a wax and it took about 30 days for me to let the the paint totally cure before i could kind of go on to that stage so if you're looking at this project fairly easy uh depending on how much prep work you really have to do and that's really kind of the key so i hope you enjoyed the video and you might uh, look at this project and take some of the tips that i actually had with this so uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed and you guys have a great day. Bye-bye.